So we need to compute a 95% confidence interval for our prediction. Um, and we're going to be asked to do that twice for the actual same values here for our acreage and our years. Uh, 0.35 acres and 45 years old, 0.35 acres, 45 years old. Um, we could do this in the Excel spreadsheet that I just had open before, but um, it's going to be messy. Uh, if you look at your textbook, um, let's see here, bring it back um, to the textbook here. Uh, it actually kind of glosses over how to do this um, confidence interval and just shows you the output in um, uh, actually um, pH stat right here. If we zoom in, this is generated by a program called pH stat, or it's actually an Excel add-in. Um, you can download it off of um, the website here if you go to um, my stat lab. Funny thing though um, that I just learned, um, pH stat worked beautifully on my other computer, my main desktop computer, but I've gone to load it on my uh, Surface Book here. It will not open. I changed all my settings to did the readme. I'm still debugging that. So interesting thing. I think I'm going to shy away from pH stat a little bit here because I'm not 100% sure you guys will be able to load it on any and every computer you're using. Um, it is great if you can use it. Wonderful. I will show you pH stat if you'd like to see it uh, later. But uh, for now, let's stay away from pH stat and I'll show you a web based. Um, app here. Now, downside to this one, um, well, upside is that it's going to run no matter what. It runs off the, their server. It's going to run 100%. doesn't matter what your computer is. doesn't matter what it's doing. If you've got my math lab or my stat lab working, it's going to work. Downside is it's web-based, so you have to have an internet connection to use Stat Crunch. Although I guess I'm assuming if you're doing your my math lab homework, you're probably connected to the internet anyways. Um, okay, so StatCrunch, you just visit the StatCrunch website um, and it will pop up a StatCrunch window for you. Uh, it will be, it'll start by being blank. Um, forgive me, let me just get back to my StatCrunch here that I actually have open. Sorry, I've got lots of windows open, bear with me here. Here's my StatCrunch. Now, um, how did I fill it with my data that I want? Um, let's just start from scratch here. So let's say I didn't have any data in here. I just go, uh, if I've had the problem open in Excel and I'm working on it, um, here it is. I just go paste all my data in from Excel. So I just copied and pasted it. And then you can name each of the headers here by just clicking on it. Uh, Priest value, uh, size of the property, your number of acres. See what we call it, property size. And last one is age of the property. So I just titled each of those. Now um, you can run your regression in StatCrunch as well. So um, let's do that. But since we've already done it in Excel, I'm going to skip over that for a sec and jump straight into what I can't do nearly as easily in Excel, which is to go and get those confidence intervals. These guys are hard to calculate. Um, and the book doesn't even show you the formula for it. Um, if you look in the book here again, it just spits out or shows you, uh, forgive me here for jumping around, it just shows you pH stat output. Uh, and it doesn't show you any formulas or doesn't show you, yeah, it doesn't show you all the formulas. Um, you see these weird inverse uh, x, uh, comma, x, or um, uh, yeah, x, x here. This is a fancy calculation, which you then need to do an m mult on, which is um, a matrix calculation, and then transpose it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that's a little bit outside of the scope of this class. We're not going to compute confidence intervals for predictions for multiple regression in Excel. A little too messy for this class. We are going to use StatCrunch to do it. You're, forgive me. So here it is. There's also lots of help for StatCrunch if you need. Um, you can go look it up after too if you need. There's help and you can just search. What I actually just had open was a help window um, for StatCrunch. But so what we need to do, going back to our example here, sorry, I'm um, 
straying a little bit here. I need to develop a 95% confidence interval for 0.35 acres and 45 years old. And then it asked me the same thing in part F. This question is actually a little bit glitchy. Uh, this was question 14.1.8 in your homework. Um, so it's a little bit glitchy. There's a typo here. Um, this first one is con just to construct the 95% confidence interval estimate for the mean appraised value uh, of a house that has land 0.35 acres and 45 years old. This guy says the exact same thing. We should take out the word mean in there. So this is for just this one individual appraised value. So not the mean, an individual value. And it wants a 95% confidence interval, which you'll notice it's much smaller, or sorry, much larger. The mean confidence interval is much smaller. Um, and this is this is related back to your um, business stats. We did uh, confidence intervals for means versus individual data. The confidence interval for a mean was actually um, smaller by a factor of the square root of n, if you remember that. So this confidence interval is much less spread out than this guy. And again, this part here should really say construct the confidence interval for the individual appraised value for one house uh, with the 0.35 acres of land and it's 45 years old. Um, okay, so let's get into doing this in stat crunch. So how do we do this? Uh, kind of easy cheat is just to put in that data down below. So 0.35 acres for the property size and 45 years old and then run stat crunch. Um, you don't put in anything here. You don't know this value. Uh, you're going to run stat crunch. It's going to make these confidence intervals for you. Uh, and how do you do that? You go to the stat option up here. Go to stat. Go to regression. Go to multiple linear. It's quite nice to use. So Y variable, we're going to want to forecast the appraised value. So you click on that in the drop down menu. X variables and shift and click or control and click. We want property size and age. I'm holding down shift as I'm clicking on them. If you just click and then click, it replaces. It only wants to put one at a time unless you shift click or control click. If you want to take something out, just click on it again. Um, interactions, we're not going to worry about that yet. And then finally, where, don't worry about that yet. Group by, don't worry about that. We'll use that when we have dummy variables or um, categorical variables uh, later in the chapter. Now here's what we want, confidence intervals. And here's where you get to set your level. So we want 95%. So we just leave this at 0.95. And if you want, you can spit out your Durbin Watts in here as well. It's always good to look at. For this question, we don't need it. So I'm just gonna not select it yet. Graphs, we don't need any of those yet, but those are useful later. Now what we do need, you have to select down here two things. Your 95% confidence interval for the mean response, that'll be your answer to part E. For part F, control click. You need to use control and then click 95% confidence interval for the individual prediction. So again, part F, there was a typo. It should say individual prediction here instead of mean. Um, so these two here will get you your answers for E and F. And click compute exclamation mark. It gives you a whole bunch of output here. This is awesome. So this is what um, this is what you also got from Excel, if you remember. Same output. Uh, so here's our summary output. You'll notice the same numbers, 404, 464, negative 262, or 2.62. Uh, same standard errors, same everything. Um, it spits out the SS, uh, E, the SST, the SS, uh, R, all the same thing, same F stat as well, 9.95, uh, etc, etc. Um, now what's not given in this window here, when you look, is all of these confidence interval values, the lowers and upper limits. And it tells you that they're stored in a new column. It puts them back in the data window. So you can go close this window now. You're done with this window, uh, especially because we have all of this in Excel already. Uh, hit close there. And in here, guess what um, has been created? Very nice. Um, Stat Crunch gave us our lower and upper limits for the mean um, predicted amount and then the individual amounts. These are our answers for parts um, for parts E and F. So here we go. We have our 395.1 in thousands and our 502 for the lower and upper limit 
for part E. And then carrying on here, 238.6 and 658.6 for our confidence interval for an individual um, house with 0.35 acres of land and 45 years old. And that will get you through this very first problem. This is 14.1.8 in your homework. Um, 